want the Holy Ghost in me. Hello everyone. Welcome to another end time four five six five video. Now this is that second video I need to make it. I don't know how long it'll be, but I wanted to just add to it. But since I've made my last video and uploaded it, the earth has turned and right now it's uh ten forty five, no ten ten forty three. 10.43 p.m. And so the earth is, uh, our side of the earth is away from the sun and facing out into our solar system and not at the sun. And with the extra tilt from the wobble, it puts us more in line with the force of the incoming object and it puts us on that side of the solar system. That being said, when I watch the uh, meteor uh, sound uh, finder, nothing happened all day long. But as we begin to turn away from the sun, uh, things begin to happen. Now, I'm going to try to get this to work for you. Uh, I don't know how good it's going to work with the... Uh, with the uh, recording going at the same time. Um, if I turn this up. Yeah. So when you see, when it sees something, it makes a pinging noise. And I'm not sure how loud that is on you, so I'm a little concerned about that. But that's turned down pretty far. I, I've been seeing this object all night. Now there just went one right there. And uh, we'll watch this a little longer. Let's see if I can do this without it blurring up. Oh, that got me in the way. Let's get me out of the way here. For the what it's worth department. So, uh, as I talk to you for a minute about this, I want you to know that uh, uh, what's going on down here. Now, there was another one. There it is, right there. And right there. I just, all I want to do is I want to show you that while we watch this. You can see the time stamp there. You can see that there, there's a big one. As we've turned away from the sun, things begin to happen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, okay, this is a long one right here. This is a pretty big object. To be coming in. This doesn't happen very much at all during the daytime facing the sun. But we get on the backside and face space, which I say space is opposite from the sun, then we begin to see these objects in these transmissions. Is frequency sonar, except uh, they're not sonar, they're space, uh, space uh, uh, radar detector. At any rate, I may not know what to call it, but I know what it is. That's when we begin to see these objects. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for what is happening right now compared to the daytime is off the hook. It's just... It's just one, two, three, four, like this. And as the night progresses, ladies and gentlemen, it'll get more and more. And sometime in the night, the big one will come. Now, they say that it's uh, 
uh, some kind of a, a frequency echo uh, when the big one shows up. Uh, but I don't know. I do know this. Is, see, all I'm trying to prove to you, ladies and gentlemen, is that something is happening. And it, at particular times. You know, it's like, well, it doesn't happen at the daytime. Okay, but, but these objects, look at this one. These objects that come in, this is real time, are only coming in at night when we are facing away from the sun. And we are facing our solar system. You understand what I'm saying? When we when we when we get on that part of the side of the earth that faces the solar system with our back to the sun, which would be night, then this activity begins to take place. Why? I'll tell you why, because it's happening in that direction. Look at that one, ladies and gentlemen. You want to explain that right there? That was huge. Did you see it? It was huge. Now there's a little one, a small particle, coming into the atmosphere. I mean, you know, when you see the big ones, what is that? We don't know what it is, but it's something. See? And all I want to tell you is it happens on the backside. When our back is facing the sun, it happens in the dark, facing our solar system, and not the sun. These things begin to take place because we're on that side. We're facing that side where the incoming object is. You got that? So I'm going to wait just a second here. And see if we can get one more really big object before I go to the next thing I want to talk about. There's a little one there. One there. I hope this. Uh, I hope the noise isn't too loud for you. I have it turned way down, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And so. I just don't want to move my mouse around too much because I don't want it to keep cutting out, stopping. But I don't want to just sit here watching this because I know you're not going to want to sit here and watch this. You know what I'm saying? So, obviously, it's not going to cooperate with me, but I, trust me, trust me. At night, when we're facing away from the sun, the later it gets, ladies and gentlemen, the more active this becomes. And I think, I'm not a scientist, but I think it's because we're facing the side of the solar system where this incoming object is approaching and pushing this debris. Okay? Now, now I want to show you something. It's too bad that we couldn't get one more big object. I sure would like to get one more big object, please. Well, it's not going to happen. This, this is, by the way, this is the way it looks in the daytime. It's like this right here, except for, except for this over here. I'm not sure what that is over there. You understand? I don't know what that is. Just had two little ones go by. You really should uh, try to find this uh, and put it on your computer, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's worth watching, uh, especially at night. In real time, it's it's so interesting. I tell you, it's just it's uh, very interesting, and it shows you the things that are happening. I hope you've checked out my last video, and you're not too mad at me.
Okay, we got a little one, and this looks like that's all we're going to get right now. So I'm going to move on so as not to bore you because we could sit here and watch this all night, all night as far as I'm concerned because when the big ones come by, it's like, whoa, you know. Okay, so let's check this out. Okay, here's an article, and it says, Planet 9 may have caused orbital tilts of all solar system planets. All right, so here's a picture, and uh, it shows uh, Planet 9 uh, over here. Uh, I don't believe this is what the orbit looks like, but But that's what it's showing us. Okay, so let's look at this. Following a major discovery implying that a ninth planet may be orbiting our solar system, the scientists are investigating its possible impact on the tilted orbits observed for the other planets. All known planets of the solar system have their orbits in almost the same plane, but it's interesting that the plane is approximately six degrees the slope of the sun's rotation plane. The momentum conservation law implies such an occurrence cannot happen lightly. Notice, which has led the scientists to suspect another object may have entered the system some time ago, causing the observed tilt. Prior to its discovery, the likely candidate to explain the spin alignment has been a passing star or magnetic field interactions of the sun and the disk from which the solar system has formed in the early days. Now, the planet 9 theoretical orbital plane differs from other solar system planets, and it may have put other planets off their axis during the early solar system period. This would also suggest the planet doesn't originate from our solar system, but it may be an exploited, captured, exploit, exo, excuse me, exoplanet captured by the sun. Okay, now let's look at this right here. It says here, because we think planet 9 has a significant inclination, if it exists, then that means it would tilt things. It's one puzzle piece that seems to fit together and really seems to be in support of Planet Nine hypothesis, says Elizabeth Bailey, a Caltech scientist. According to the calculations, the Planet Nine could weigh between 5 and 20 times the mass of our planet, with an extremely erratic orbit that reaches 250 times the distance of the sun and the earth and its furthest end. Such an orbit indicates it was actually once on an exoplanet before it got captured by our sun. Note, what is important is that the protruding planet is off plane. Jupiter cannot cause its own tilt. Okay, so Jupiter has changed in its orbit. Other planets have changed in their orbits. They've tilted. Something is pulling things around. You understand that? I mean, this is happening for real. I mean, this isn't made up science fiction. This is, this is the facts. So the facts are, if this is the case, ladies and gentlemen, then something is coming, isn't it? Something is coming, isn't it? And although they don't want to say what it is, Planet Nine or Wormwood or whatever, something's coming in because it's causing effects. It's affecting the other parts of our solar system as it approaches. And so if it's, if it's affecting Jupiter, what, what, do you, what do you think it's going to do to the little itsy-bitsy Earth, ladies and gentlemen? Could this be the factor that caused the disruption and the destruction of the dinosaurs 
and Noah's flood, ladies and gentlemen, is this possible that God has, within his power, created something that he calls wormwood that's actually traversing closer and closer on a specific timetable laid apart by God for such a time as this, and this is the time, and you're not watching, and it's sneaking up on us. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you something that's very interesting. I want to show you some other things, too. Let's look at this right here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now this is... Uh, this is Earthquake 3D. Hang on, hang on. Let me fix this. Okay, I got it fixed now. This is Earthquake 3D. Now, it's been kind of quiet. And this is the last two days. I got it so you can't see this piece over here, but this is for the last two days. But it's awful quiet over here. Uh, Africa, Europe, uh, Middle East... Very quiet, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and as we come around on the ring of fire, we see here that there is activity uh, in the Solomon Islands and uh, around Australia, uh, Indonesia, and Japan has begun to quake, uh, just like Dutch Sense said. He calls it every time. And uh, But this, this, here's what I want to show you about this. Okay, now, we're being affected by a solar flare, ladies and gentlemen, right now. Now, this is just the last two days, 48 hours. Now, I want to show you something that you may not know. I want to look at all earthquakes the last seven days. Ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt, right here, you can see plainly by this increase. Southern California, there's a swarm going here, ladies and gentlemen. There's a swarm, well, I don't know, swarm, yeah, a swarm going on in uh, at the uh, point of the, uh, the plate line here in the Oklahoma area. Uh, there's one over here on the east side of the craton and but but here's what I want to show you I want to show you these swarms see this swarm right here this is in Southern California okay now you see where it is as I make them as I make them drop out look watch I'm gonna make them I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop them in as the days go, days go, days go, days go, days go. Look, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. This shows extreme pressure being applied from the southern part of the San Andreas Fault. This is a very volcanic area. Old volcanic area that I believe is about to re-erupt. That's just me. It doesn't matter. I'm living over here in central Texas. If something big happens down here, I'm going to be right under a plume of ash, and it ain't going to be good. Now, I still think that this swarm that's going on up here and down here is causing pressure here. Uh, I say that. Of course, I'm regurgitating information, uh, as some of my trolls would say. I just regurgitate other information, and yes, I'm only, I'm only agreeing. I'm agreeing that that there's pressure being put here, extreme. Now, I don't know exactly when, but this is going to break, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to break, and it's going to go. That's it. And also, the new Madrid fault is going to go. Is this going to cause this? Some say that these go this way. Some say the pressure goes this way. So if it happens here, it's going to go this way. If it happens down here, it's going to go up here and then go east. And what's going to happen in Puerto Rico? Don't forget the prophecy, ladies and gentlemen. 
the prophecy that was given to us that a meteor impact was going to take place in the Atlantic Ocean, okay, but what was going to be a sign? The sign before this impact? Wow. The man said it was going to be a 7.0 earthquake in Puerto Rico. Okay. Well, it's, it's not far off because of the pressure we know is being applied. At any rate, if a 7.0 earthquake happens here, you better wake up and smell coffee. I'm just saying. So, don't forget that there's a swarm going on in Southern California, right there. And that ain't no joke. Look at this. There's a swarm here. And as we turn it around, come around here, Russia, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Asia, look, you got to admit, this ain't right. Something's causing this magma pressure on our planet. Even the Yellowstone area is beginning to record things. So what I'm telling you is, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you these things because it's only more proof that a pole shift is coming. Did you see that? A pole shift is coming. Now, let's look at this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a video from YouTube, and this is uh, courtesy of uh, uh, LTTV2, and um, um, you should go and check out their channel. Uh, but this is a, a, a interview with the astrometer, uh, whatever this guy's name is. Okay, but it's a particular part of this interview about Planet Nine or Wormwood that I want you to watch. I hope this will play now. I'm going to try to start this, and let's just listen for a moment, and then we'll. I want to talk about something. Now, now please listen. Uh, as much attention, we were just writing the paper initially when we were uh, working on this, but uh, you know, really blessed. Well, let's talk about that. We're going to talk about how you, you guys kind of came up with this idea that the planet existed in the math and the computational aspects of it. But first, let's talk about the planet itself, because that's what people really want to know about. Sure. Now, you have presented the probability that this planet exists. We have not seen it. We haven't captured it on film or anything. But you are making quite a good argument that it exists. Tell us what Planet Nine is, what it looks like, how big is it, what's it like? So Planet Nine, in terms of physical appearance, is, is probably closest to sort of a smaller sibling of, of Uranus and Neptune. It's a little gas giant. It's not like the Earth, where you know, the Earth has a solid surface on which you can stand, and there's an atmosphere. It, uh, it's, it's a big combination of mostly ice and rock, which is enveloped by a th very thick atmosphere uh, of hydrogen and helium. And in the what did he say? Ice and rock? With an atmosphere of helium? Ladies and gentlemen, I wonder, does he know anything about the Bible? Why would he say that? Let me show you something. Okay. Now I'm really going to upset you, ladies and gentlemen. Because I got the Bible on. But I really want to show you something. I want to correlate now. I want to show you. End times 4, 5, 6, 5. Now we know something is coming. Planet 9. The Bible calls it Wormwood. We just saw the scientist. He called it ice. He called it gases and ice. Helium. That's what he called it. Poison. Okay. Now watch. Revelation chapter 8, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood as they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. 
the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain, burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Why? Because of the tsunami, ladies and gentlemen. Not the ships that are out to sea, but all the ships that were in port like they are right now. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it was a lamp, and it fell on the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Many men died because of waters, because they were made bitter. So let's look that up, ladies and gentlemen. The third part of the waters became wormwood. It's called wormwood, G894, and here we see G894, and uh, we push G894. We can see here that it's a uncertain uh, deviation, wormwood, a type of bitterness, figuratively calamity, wormwood. But when we look right here, it's from G1519, which is the uh, Greek word S, which is ice, ladies and gentlemen. Ice, ladies and gentlemen. Wormwood is a crashing meteor of ice. Predicted in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Now, is the whole thing going to hit us? I don't know. Is a piece of it going to hit us? Is there parts of it flying around that came loose? I don't know. But I know that when Wormwood gets here, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to make the water poison. Many men died because of waters, because they were made bitter or poison. You understand? To embitter, to make bitter, become poison. You see what I mean? Do you? You see what I mean, ladies and gentlemen? Make no mistake about it. We're in the end times. And I have shown with these two videos, I've given you some sense of evidence that something is coming. Now, every time I come on here with my pole shift information, it seems like it just gets more and more. Always something more, always something more, always something more. And I'm not getting a lot of views anymore, but that's okay. I don't know why. I'm no different than the rest of these cats. I guess I could sound more professional. And as we uh, notice the earthquakes on Earthquake 3D, uh, we can see uh, that the rings are pink and red, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And also note that the earth is spinning, and therefore we can considerably assume that things are happening within the pixels of the video monitor. Therefore, it has erupted into a mass quantum of colors and an array of information that causes us to black out. 
come on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not like that. I mean, come on, man. I mean, why would I want to even do that? See, I'm, we've got to be real because time is running out. Man, I don't know when this thing's going to happen. See, we're going to be like this right here one day. It's going to be like this. And, and the earth is going to be going like this. And it's tilted maybe like this right now for summertime. And it's going. And it's getting pulled a little more around. And it's still going. And then... And then one day, something's going to happen. Planet Nine gets too close, and boom. The Holy Ghost in me. 